the five most common bro science mistakes from my perspective as the anabolic doc taking care of thousands of men on anabolic steroids for close to 20 years now. Here we go. In the fifth position, number five, getting drugs, steroids from underground facilities versus real pharmacies. Again, this is not anything giving a support to, to steroids. This is going to be the most common bro science, what bro science guys tell me that they see as mistakes. So underground labs, mainly in the United States, guys get the raw materials from abroad in like kilograms. It's crazy. It looks like the guys have tell me it looks like like a whole powder um, of like Coke or something because you're getting the powder depending on how much they buy. It can definitely be contaminated guys. There's no question. It can definitely be not the drug you think it is. So if they think it's Anavar, it may actually be D-ball. And there's so many complications in this. I, I mean, I'm not a bro science chemist, so but I hear from you guys and I talk to you guys as I do consultations all over the world. So that's where this is coming from, from my ears, my eyes, listening and seeing you guys all over the world telling me this stuff. So it can be contaminated. There can be dangerous things in there like heavy metals. And then it, it's commonly overdosed or underdosed or mixed dosed with other drugs. So this is underground. Now, where's the best place that guys tell me? Because I'm not giving this advice to you guys. It's gonna be real pharmacies abroad, mainly in state-run facilities. These are gonna be countries in Asia, Eastern Europe, Middle East, Mexico, Central, and South America. America doesn't make steroids. I mean, testosterone, Anavar, Decadurabalin, you know, which is compounded, this stuff. But we're talking real steroids, okay? These are made, these are real drugs that have been made, and these are state-run pharmacies, if you will, or manufacturing-grade pharmacies facilities that will actually make some of these drugs, according to you guys telling me, that are of legitimate source. So that's number five. In the fourth position, the next medical mistake that I see is checking labs, doing your labs and having it checked with a non-expert doctor, a guru. Again, and I'm not here smashing out the gurus. That's not what it's for. This is telling you guys what I see up to number one place. What are the bro signs? It's bro signs, man. This is what we see. So it's not a traditional physician. And that's why, guys, I have the app, Anabolic docapp.com obviously i'm still seeing patients i'm pretty much maxed out it's on a rolling admission only now been doing it for a long time i do consults all over the world a couple days a week love it and i will keep doing that but i can't take all these patients so if you want medical information not medical traditional information straight from me but if you want medical information about steroids and your questions get on the app so what's going on when you check your labs? Here's the bro science mistakes that I see. Guys check a CBC and they end up getting information that's wrong. The, the, the guru or the person looking at the lab and the CBC doesn't really fully understand it. He's not hematologically trained. He doesn't look at iron studies. So you're looking at something called androgen induced erythrocytosis, that's where men take steroids and testosterone even, and increase the red blood cells. <clears throat> it can be dangerous, guys. It can lead potentially to strokes, hypercoagulable states on the venous side, which is a DVT, leading to a pulmonary embolism, or on the arterial side, that's a heart attack or a stroke. Can also retinal occlusions in the eye and headaches and blurry vision. You gotta be careful. You have to understand your family history for hereditary hemochromatosis. You have to understand and look at iron studies, guys. So get a CBC and get the iron studies. That's gonna look at total iron, iron saturation, ferritin. This is how I put it all together. I do this for my patients independently, man per man. This is how you look at this. And if you just phlebotomize, 
you're just going to potentially make it worse or cause paradoxic anemia with the iron studies or straight up anemia and then you feel terrible. This I see all the time. Next, comprehensive metabolic panel. Guys are getting it. Basic metabolic, looking at kidney and liver. So cystatin C. If you think your creatinine is high and you're off creatine supplements, or maybe you're dehydrated, you want to verify it, guys, check a cystatin C urinalysis. If you have any protein, trace protein, one plus protein in the urine, you got to be really, really careful for early onset kidney disease from steroids with a man that has susceptibility genes and is hypertensive, taking too much protein, maybe taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. Check your blood pressure. This is where you want to see a nephrologist, okay? You want to see a nephrologist. Lipids. Again, you can see the video I put out with Dr. Nolan. This is so important. The lipids now are kind of like the cholesterol myth, but you want to understand uh, potential. You see what's going on in the world with bodybuilders. Are they having heart attacks? Are they not having? Do steroids cause it? Come on, guys. It's just how much risk do you want to take? And guys that are not on steroids have heart attacks. Come on. I mean, this is just a common feature. So blood pressure, always want to check that echocardiogram, coronary artery calcium score. You want to look at a lipidologist like Dr. Nolan or a cardiologist, and you really want to understand this stuff. This is where the app, guys, the app is giving all this information. It's unlimited for you, but it's private, membership only, and it's going to be not medical advice, but it's going to give you every single tool you need to understand what's going on in your body from my perspective, with thousands of patients that I've learned as a real doctor, only taking care of men on androgens, and it directs you where to go, okay, for your heart, for your kidney, for your liver. So the last piece here is urinary issues. If you're getting older, even in your 30s, steroids cause enlargement of the prostate. God forbid, hopefully you don't have some prostate cancer and it's worsening prostate cancer. Thank God, very rare. I've only seen a few cases, it's thank God. So, but BPH and lower urinary tract symptoms are horrendous. When you get 35, 45, 55, not every guy's going to get it, but most guys, when you're getting up to my age and you're on androgens for 10, 20, 30 years or more, you know, you're looking at the heart, looking at the kidney and all this great stuff, very important, but is your, is your prostate enlarged? You want to use a great, great urologist. He's not going to do surgery. He's going to do a digital rectal examination. He's going to determine the size. Maybe they can get a, an MRI. They can look at studies. They could really determine if your prostate's enlarged. And there are things you can do about it. There's some things called the Euro lift. You don't want to get a board out when you're like an old man prematurely because your prostate's closed down. They have to board out. Because if you're obstructed, that's not pretty. Again, that, that's not going to be pretty. So you want to use your doctors. Again, I just laid it out for you guys. Use your doctors. The app is going to be there for you always. In the third position, checking estrogen with two different labs. Total estrogen versus ultra-sensitive estradiol. This is a secret, guys. I learned it myself only last couple of years. I used to check total estrogen, just total estrogen, because it mainly is estradiol. I learned that at least for the labs that we use here in America, that it can be contaminated, where you see these 4,000 numbers, these huge numbers, and then guys are just using huge doses of aromatase inhibitors to drive down just the number, and they're destroying their health, their mood, their, they feel horrible, they're wrecking themselves because they're looking at a total estrogen. That's a bro science mistake in the third position. So that you want to look at ultra sensitive estradiol. It's a mass spectroscopy. You want to see that MS. Again, there's different lab techniques. I'm not the expert in the lab techniques, guys. You want to make sure you get the proper ultra sensitive estradiol if you are going to look at the estradiol. When you're on testosterone, do you really need, and you're on a low dose, the lowest dose you can take? You know, I don't like aromatase inhibitors. I don't like to use those chronically. I mean, we use some of them, but sparingly. And what are you doing it for? And what is it going to do to your health and your mood and your sex long term? You guys have told me. You've told me that it's not recommended and it doesn't, it's not something good to do. 
So just be careful. You don't really need to check your estrogen. But I do it for my patients all the time because I know they want it. And we do use it and we make adjustments. Okay. In the second position regarding estrogen, running an aromatase inhibitor or tamoxifen for estrogenic symptoms, mainly gynecomastia, while on steroids or TRT. Now, testosterone is variable, like low-dose testosterone that someone like myself or my guys take, my patients 100 milligrams, maybe every seven days or four days, maybe twice a week max, you know, up to like, hey man, I'm, I'm cruising on TRT dose doc, I'm taking 400. I mean, that's gonna be a lot of estrogen conversion, guys. So that's what I'm talking about, running the AI or the tamoxifen. You know, there are two different medicines, but they're both anti-estrogens. Now, if you did it, if you guys, listen closely to this. If you run, if you're on steroids or testosterone, say you're testosterone, you're just running testosterone. And if you took it from the absolute beginning, you know, this is kind of like the, the, the PCT stuff I'll get into. It, it may work, actually, because you're, you're chronically suppressing the aromatization in your system. You're chronically suppressing the production of estradiol. It may work. I mean, I agree. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? What's the side effect of running these drugs? Again, this is my experience, guys, anecdotally with thousands of men over many years. Poor mood. Regardless of the number, hey man, I nailed the number down on paper and I, oh, I feel so, I feel flat, doctor. And if this is, if you have any history of any depression, which so many of you do, it's just true, it's just reality. It's not your fault, it's just, com it's complicated. Anxiety, so it's gonna affect your mood. Even baby doses of these aromatase inhibitors. And again, you're checking your ultra-sensitive estradiol, right? Not total estrogen, and you're putting it together, hopefully with a doctor. Sex, is it gonna affect your sex? Tendon ruptures, no power if there are strong men. I take care of the biggest men in the world, strong men and power lifters, uh, less bodybuilder. Bodybuilders kind of gave up on me because I'm not giving a blessing to all the crazy drugs they do, sorry guys. And, but real men come to me all the time that are power lifters and amateur and bodybuilders, amateur and strong men. No strong man and no power lifter they don't use AIs and tamoxifen, for, uh, for, excuse me for the few exceptions. They don't do it. They don't want to rupture tendons. So these drugs have effects, drying effects, right guys? The AIs, I'm giving all, I'm bleeding it out for you guys. The next is using these AIs on cardiac disease. Again, there's no discrete data, but there's a lot of data for women that use these drugs the aromatase inhibitors like, like Arimidex chronically or Letrozole to use these chronically for years because they had breast cancer. It can affect adverse effects on the heart, guys. Endothelial aspect of the heart. It devastates the HDL. That's the good cholesterol. You, if you're on testosterone, you've lowered your good cholesterol already. If you're on steroids, even further. HDL, guys, please pay attention. Put it all together. Get on the app. You could put it all together yourself. I'm there. Family history. If you have a family history of coronary artery disease, you gotta be careful with any of these drugs. You gotta be careful with your life. Just, you're gonna have a heart attack potentially just getting older, guys. And this is not bullshit. Forget steroids. Steroids will throw monkey wrenches in there. Love it. I mean, I, I love to be on steroids. I would love to. I'm on testosterone, but I'm so worried about my cardiac health. And that's my secret, guys. So if you have hypertension, family history, you watch the HDL, you're on these AIs chronically, guys, that's a medical mistake. That is a bro science mistake. Keep the dose, so what do you do? Guys, if it's for gynecomastia, keep the doses down. Go see a plastic surgeon. I'm giving it right to you guys. Go see a plastic surgeon. They can do a great surgeon, not a general surgeon. I love general surgeons. God, these guys are miracle workers. You need these guys. But they're gonna, when you, when a general surgeon typically does something like this, and maybe, probably most of them won't even wanna do it, but if they do the surgery, it looks like an ice cream scooper. You have an ice cream scooper right beneath your nipples. They're sucked in. You wanna go to a great plastic surgeon. Go on Google, if it's America or somewhere in the world, and put in um, plastic surgery, male gynecomastia. And then you look at the reviews and interview those doctors. So keep the doses down, guys. 
don't use these drugs of Romanase inhibitors. And tamoxifen, I don't even know how many guys are using tamoxifen because they have some sensational gynecomastia. It doesn't systemically block the estrogen. You guys probably know this, this is incredible bro science, but it will affect, and it, I've seen blood clots, but I've seen so many patients, I've seen so much that, is it a bias? So I've seen blood clots, you know, from tamoxifen, Novadex, be careful. Keep the estrogenic drugs down, keep the cycles limited, keep the body fat down. So these are all ways how to look at aromatization. All right, okay, here we go. So in the number one position of the five most important bro science mistakes that I see not to make, the number one most important one is when men take steroids, they think Post-cycle therapy will guarantee recovery of natural testosterone after the steroids or SARMs. Please guys, listen to me very closely. I do consults all week long with young men that have used SARMs and now he's shut down. I see it so much guys. This part of the video is for you young men that are doing your research right now and you haven't done steroids or SARMs and you think SARMs may be better. Please be careful. I don't think it's worth it. If you if you end up on testosterone and blasting and cruising and you don't care or you think, I don't mind that, boom, that's your decision. If you understand that you're going to be shut down. Now, what does shut down mean? Because you guys use this term, sex. Sex is not good. You're waiting for it to come back at the base like it was when you first started. Your mood you don't feel good, depressed. If, get, if you have depression underlying, if you have anxiety, I have half the country, if not more, has some depression. I had it in the past. I even have, I'm an anxious guy. People, these are people. You're regular people. These drugs are gonna affect your mood. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you the truth. And fatigue, ugh, I'm tired after I've done this. I don't come back. My energy's down. This is the most common thing. Sex affected, moods affected, energy's affected. There's variability, guys. Variability. Sure, if you do a cycle, you may come back with or without PCT. Here we go. There's no data. There's no data today showing that the classic PCT regimen, what is it? It's tamoxifen, clomid, and HCG. Of course, there's also AIs that are in there to recover the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. Guys, there's no data. It's all just self-experience and experimentation. Is it worth it for you? Think about this, take a break and think. So some men say it works. There's no question. Doc, I did my PCT, I do my psych, it works. Works great for me, doctor. I get off, I wait, I do my PCT, feel great, go back on. That's, if you do more and more cycles, you're gonna see that it's not gonna work. But I'm just trying to be honest with you guys. But yet some men say it works, but is it really just the fact that they're coming off and their central nervous system, hypothalamus pituitary, is reconnecting with the testicles? That's what I think. Is it just returning on its own? And is the PCT actually maybe murking the waters or actually setting up a, a, a sustained period where it's just, you need your brain to kind of wake up. You guys, I've told you guys on this in the consultations, you need your brain to wake up and feel the low T so it wakes up, hypothalamus pituitary comes alive and starts sending out LH and FSH, testicles, receptors, uh, the Leydig cells, serotonin cells, up, semen's production comes back, takes a while, takes a few months in full, weeks at least, and your testosterone endogenously from your testicles is going back up to your brain. So it's circulating from your balls now, not from the exogenous site from the steroids, and now you are back on your balls. You're back running on your balls. So most important aspect, here it is guys, I'm giving it straight to you. The most important aspect from, from my perspective is like the old days, the length of the steroid cycle Back in the day, it was six to eight weeks. It was only six to eight weeks. How many guys really did it? We have no research, but I was around back then. Six to eight weeks, maybe a little bit more, maybe 12, but when you start doing it, they had time off. They really came off. 
And I assume that they, they're young and the young men, they did bounce back. There's always going to be a lull. That's the withdrawal, potentially, when you come off the steroids and you guys know it's true. Now we have blasting and cruising because guys don't want to feel bad when they come off steroids despite their PCT. PCT can work and make you feel better, guys. But does it, in the end, restore endogenous production of testosterone? No one knows. I don't think it does. But it's good for fertility. You can come off. Doc, I need to get fertile. HCG is the drug of choice, guys. Not tamoxifen and no AIs. It's just HCG. But again, is that going to prolong the restoration stage? Think about it, guys. So, limit the amount of doses. Keep the doses down, guys, common sense, and keep the harsh drugs. Trend. Here's the deal in the androgen world. I came up with this after talking to so many of you guys over years. There's three drugs in the androgen world, the steroid world. There's testosterone, there's steroids, then there is trend. Trend is in a class by itself, guys. It works well. You'll get big and beasty. You'll be a monster. Side effects are very, very powerful. Some of you guys take it. I'm always amazed. You're living on 300 milligrams of trend a week, um, maybe more, maybe up to a gram. And uh, there's no, the night sweats and the anger and, and all the different, you know, the, the trend cough and all these other kind of side effects. Trend sex, trend and sex. It's usually very good, but then what goes up will come down. Beware of trend and it's safe to say that any steroid cycle is going to potentially shut you down. Is with or without PCT, is it worth it, guys? Is it worth it? And you have to think about that if you're doing your research. Is it worth it? This is the number one most important bro science mistake that I see that you even do steroids. And I'm not here being a wise guy. Guys, please like the video. Please subscribe. Show everyone in the world the anabolic doc. Show this video. Show my work on YouTube. And please show the anabolic doc app. Because that's where I'm disseminating all my information for you guys for here and forever. Thank you so much.